and it doesn't have a title. Um, I went to Buenos Aires as other true believers go to the Wailing Wall, the Vatican, to Lourdes, or to Mecca. I went there with the faithful passion of a devotee. I went to Buenos Aires to dance tango. I left the United States with stars in my eyes and came back with a broken heart and 12 pairs of gorgeous tango shoes. When the subject of the pilgrimage to BA, as Buenos Aires is called, comes up, people who dance tango fall into two camps. One group wholeheartedly supports your travel plans, gives you insider advice on the codigo, the dancer's etiquette and code of conduct, tips on safety when navigating the city alone, and where to buy shoes. Shoes are to a tango dancer as what tail feathers are to a peacock. The other group tells you not to go. They say, if you go, you'll be changed forever. Some people come back from Buenos Aires and they stop dancing. You don't want to be one of those people. There are a few really wrong things a person can say to a serious Argentine tango dancer. One, make a joke about how they probably dance with a rose between their teeth. Two, ask them if they think the latest reality TV celebrity on Dancing with the Stars is a good tango dancer. And three, Repeat the inherently goofy and oft-repeated adage that tango is the vertical expression of a horizontal desire. <laughs> Be sure to say it in a conspiratorial, nudge-nudge sort of way. Trust me, eyes will roll. In 1997, on a cold, rainy winter's day, I went to a movie that changed my life. I saw Sally Potter's film, The Tango Lesson, it wasn't because I was newly separated and on my way to divorce that the dance resonated with me so, although it's not uncommon to find people in similar circumstances starting tango lessons. I made a vow to learn to dance tango as I had seen it in that film, which was a revelation to me. And then I met someone, fell in love, and got sucked into the transcendental meditation scene of all things. I buried and then soon forgot about my wish to learn tango. The Maharishi wouldn't have approved of tango. <laughs> the things we give up for love. Six years later, that man and I went our separate ways. He wanted to devote himself to his own spiritual enlightenment, and I wanted to live in the real world. So it was time for me <laughs> to learn tango. <laughs> I started lessons in Mountain View with the Bay Area doyenne of Argentine tango, Nora, and her charming American husband, Ed, one of her former students. I waited breathlessly for my cheap Made in China dancing shoes to arrive in the mail and took classes twice a week. Men who looked like Ichabod Crane stepped on my toes <laughs> and didn't apologize. Men who had bad breath and linty sweaters and glasses smudged with fingerprints would blame me for their missteps, even as the teacher came over to show my latest partner what he was doing all wrong. Tango for men is much harder to learn, and many men drop out of the dance gene pool pretty quickly. The allure of holding a female, in many instances a woman who might never look at them twice outside of the dance class, is what brings many men to tango. I don't blame them. But in the end, without lots of practice, they give up. It didn't take me long to realize that I was progressing way beyond the beginner level of the class, so I started taking private lessons with Nora at her house. I learned to walk, to breathe, to pivot. And then I got my first pair of stiletto heels shipped direct from Buenos Aires and any remaining balance problems I had were immediately solved. My walk was starting to become one of a tanguera, a porteña. Dancing confidently in three to four inch pencil thin stiletto heels sounds very counterintuitive, but for tango it is a necessity. The shoes position a dancer so she balances just slightly forward over the balls of her feet. 
So her chest is thrust out, just so, and that her ass, just so. And that is the stance you need for the tango embrace. There are all of these legends about how tango came to be, that it was born in the brothels of Buenos Aires, where the ratio of men to women was all out of whack, and that while the men were waiting for their turn with the next available whore, they would dance with each other, and that is how tango was born. Like all religions, there is a myth at the heart of tango. But tango was a dance of the lower classes, and it did begin in Buenos Aires at the dawn of the 20th century. It did not take long for tango to cross the Atlantic and become the scandalous dance that everyone in Parisian society learned. Tango fever swept across Europe, Rudolf Valentino tangoed on a silver screen, and women bobbed their hair and smoked cigarettes and learned to dance. By the time tango returned to Buenos Aires after two world wars, it had become a phenomenon. Dancers go through a progression of stages. As they mature, they leave one teacher and search for another guru. My obsession led me to a handsome Argentine named Roberto. The women loved him and the men wanted to dance like him. <laughs> like any respectable male Argentine tango teacher, Roberto had a wife back in BA, a girlfriend in the US, a dance partner, and at least one lover that I was aware of, not to mention the groupies like me. His life and tango were one. Roberto always talked about dancing with the heart, el corazón, and he would take his big firm hand and rub it over his chest, and you couldn't help but swoon just a little bit. He would close his eyes and sigh, and you would hope that he would pick you to demonstrate some little step while he was in his trance and Carlos Gardel was singing. Dancing with Roberto was like sailing, like gliding over smooth waters. And then he would say something like, someday you will come with me to Buenos Aires, and then you will understand. So I did. Confiteria Ideal is the Mecca inside of Mecca. In the film, The Tango Lesson, Sally Potter dances there, and in the movie Tango by Carlos Sora, one of the best scenes takes place there too. Ideal is an elegantly dilapidated hall with chipped and peeling columns, a marble floor. The walls are lined with small tables where the old men wait as the late afternoon sun angles in the windows and rays of light mix with the dust from the floor. It's not crowded then in the afternoon, and the dance floor is easier to navigate than at night. <coughs> men in their 70s and 80s dance with women of all ages. And when I say they can dance, boy, I mean it. Suffice to say, if a man starts dancing tango when he is 10 or 12 years old with his mother and his aunties, by the time he is 80, he will be pretty goddamn good at it. <laughs> they are a dying breed, though, these old milongueros. There is a way a man who knows how to dance embraces his partner. It is with a mixture of control, desire, and reverence. He holds you like you are made of spun glass that you are the most precious thing right there and then. And while each of you know that this man's time here on earth is almost at an end, <coughs> he can still move with grace and he can make you forget how, bold, how old you both are. He knows the note of every song just as he knows his own heartbeat. One man whispered to me, Linda, Linda, and I giggled. I said, my name is Julie. <laughs> And he would say it again, Linda, Linda. <laughs> Linda means pretty. Most followers dance with their eyes closed. I always did. It's actually harder to dance with your eyes open because then there is a part of you that cannot let go. If you allow yourself to be led, you have to go all the way. And it's best to trust by not seeing what comes next. Instead, 
feeling the man's palm midway down your back and the change in pressure there and his other hand that holds yours and how he moves his chest ever so slightly against yours. Those things are what guide you. If your eyes are open, you will miss these clues. You will be distracted. If you are lucky, he will hum or sing in your ear, and then you can hear the music the way he does, and know why he leads you to where he does, from the heart of Corazon. If an Argentine man asks you to have coffee while you are dancing, you must be careful. Coffee is not coffee in Argentina. <laughs> coffee is an invitation to bed. I will leave it at that. In Buenos Aires, there are two worlds. The tango world starts to wake up around 10 at night. The better dancers don't arrive at the milongas until at least midnight and dances might last until 4 a.m. <coughs> Although cocaine is rumored to be a problem with some habitués, most people do not drink. One needs to stay sharp when dancing tango. A sloppy dancer, especially a male, will get a bad reputation and women will stop dancing with him. No one wants to participate in a faux pas on the floor. I became a necessary and regular consumer of no-dos and cortados, intensely strong and sweet tiny cups of espresso with milk. At the end of a successful night, in the remis, the hired car, or the bedraggled rust bucket of a cab that you can barely believe still runs, you remember your feet. All night long, you were so entertained, so swept away, that you didn't realize how painfully you would suffer after you left the milonga. Here is the cure, and it does work. You must plunge your feet bare, throbbing, into the coldest water you can stand for as long as you can take it. Cold to the point that you cannot feel your feet anymore. While you are freezing your feet into oblivion, take at least four Advil. If you are lucky, your feet will stay frozen long enough for you to fall asleep. With the smell of someone else's sweat on your cheek, and the faint melodies of a bandonia in your head. And then you will do it all again the next night. In the milongas, the dances, the men sit on one side of the room and the women on the other. The custom sounds very Hasidic, very old world. And there are some couples who sit together, but then it's generally understood that they will be exclusive and that the <coughs> women will have no other partners that night. To save everyone the heartbreak or possible loss of face from rejection, the dancers have perfected the look, the cabaseo. Say you're a man sitting across the room and you see a woman you want to dance with. If you cross the floor to ask her to dance, everyone sees what you are up to. You would have to approach her and then she must accept or refuse the invitation. What if she has decided that she does not want to dance with you for whatever reason? Then she has been put in a position of refusing you in front of everyone, and you must return to your seat alone, or else she must hide her dismay and take a mercy dance. Neither party wishes that circumstance. Instead, let's say you are a man and you see a woman you want to dance with, so you gaze at her intently until she notices you. You might raise your eyebrows she might look away. If she looks away and does not come back to meet your eyes, you have lost her. If she looks away and then back to you, perhaps inclines her head slightly as if to say, yes, I'll have you, then you both nod and you meet on the dance floor. No words are exchanged, not even names. You wait for the beat and then you dance. If it sounds strange and romantic, it is. I miss the cabaseo. In this country, we are not taught how to look another person in the eye. I danced with a man at Club Grisel, and we were a match like one glove holding the other. It's very easy to fall in love many times a night with your partners. These affairs are called tango crushes, and they happen all the time. Sometimes they last just for the length of a tanga, 
three or four dances, and sometimes they last much longer. This man I danced with, he was one of many in his fine suit and tie and polished shoes. I could feel his cheek rise against mine so I could tell he was smiling and he was enjoying me and that I was following every nuance of his movements. Against custom, we danced more than one tanda together. Finally, we tried to talk. Neither one of us spoke Spanish. He spoke Italian, but no English. We both spoke a little French, just enough to tell each other how happy we were. And then we kissed each other on both cheeks, and that was the end of it. In the practice studio, the floors were so uneven as to resemble a muted ocean of wood, yet so smoothed by the thousands of devoted feet over the years that it was worn to perfection. The tiny room was mirrored on one wall, and the others were covered with fading and torn posters of tango legends from the past. The studio was just large enough for one couple and a teacher as the other students waited outside in the private garden for their turn. The afternoons were humid from gentle rains, and the smell of jasmine floated through the open door. Once, the sound of gunshots woke me from my reverie and reminded me that I was not in the best part of town. The man I was dancing with, a friend of Roberto's, had taken over my mind, and I was bloating inside, as he was the best dancer and the one every woman wanted to practice with. He would leave the extra sensuous moves with me and not with the others, the leg wraps and the caresses with the shins and feet. Late at night, after the milonga, he would wait in the hallway for me. Another rule of tango, never sleep with the people you think you want to sleep with. It ruins the dance. You'd rather have the dance than the sex. Another younger man had also become a favorite. You have to watch out for some of these boys, the taxi dancers. They are incredibly gifted dancers, and they are poor. They want green cards. They want to come and live with you in America. They make you feel that they are madly in love with you, and that they are very, and they are very masterful at it. On my last day in Buenos Aires, Gabriel takes out a small notebook with a map of the world on it. He hands me a pen and asks me to mark with an X where it is I live. I make my mark at San Francisco, and then he draws a heart around it, a heart, el corazón. And so I came back home. I know women who have expatriated themselves to Argentina for tango, and it is not as rare as you might think. I thought about it many times, especially at the beginning in those first sleepless nights when I was back in my own bedroom and feeling very lost. The people who warned me not to go were right. What lives in the air and blood and sidewalks of Buenos Aires creates the weft and warp of a seductive existence that cannot survive the daily routines of the American way. There are many good dancers here in the US. San Francisco is a destination city for Argentine tango. The men who are talented know they are, and they take workshops and lots of classes, and when you dance with them, you feel like they are practicing their latest moves. You could be anybody, any body. And so I do not dance anymore. It's been easier not to, because what I want, I cannot have here. Once in a while, I think about going back. I listen to my tango music, and I remember. I have a pair of black leather shoes, still powdered with the faint gray dust from the floors of Confiteria Ideal, where the old men wait, perhaps for me. Thank you.